Over 200 million women lack access to quality reproductive health services. Women are critical to reducing poverty and raising healthy, well-educated children. Voice of America's Pauline Diho has more in this interview with Tamara Krenin, Executive Director of Women and Population at the UN Foundation. Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia are the worst. Um, there are about 39 countries in Sub-Saharan Africa where fertility rates are high, um, about nine in Southeast Asia, just to give you sort of a sense, four in Latin America. And it's that grouping of countries, and, and then six in Oceania, um, that grouping of countries that we worry about in terms of fertility. And they worry about themselves. Some of the leaders in some of those countries are increasing their line items for family planning um, because they end up with famine and they have too many mouths to feed and they know that they want to educate their population and their kids and they want to feed their kids. Um, you know, I think it's almost a natural instinct. So um, Africa's making some progress in many arenas but in reproductive health they're, they're lagging along. There's a saying that uh, educating a girl is like educating a village. Uh, I was wondering uh, if there are some programs, uh, if there are some programs designed really to empower uh, these young girls out in Africa or elsewhere. There's wonderful programs and I think the challenge we have is taking them to scale. But I'll tell you about a program I just visited in Addis and it's a program in the Mercado which is one of the largest slums and also the largest markets in Africa. And girls show up there running away from child marriages oftentimes met at the bus station by somebody who either puts them into sex work or domestic work. They're working either just free for room and board or for six dollars a month. And there are mentors in the community who have been identified and they go door to door. And they say their hardest job is negotiating with the employer to get them to let the girl come to an informal education. Once that girl shows up, she has a few hours of informal education. She learns to read. She learns to speak a little English, Amharic, her numbers. And she learns life skills about sexual and reproductive health, about AIDS prevention. It changes her life. She then gets into primary school. And we're now watching those girls transition to secondary school. And they also stay safe from violence. So if a girl's experiencing violence, if she's abused in her employer's home, there's a shelter for those girls to go to. How big is that uh, problem across, across the hall of uh, underage uh, marriages or child, uh, child trafficking, especially for young girls? How big, how big of, a, of a threat is that? It depends on the country, and actually it depends on the region of the country. So then I think that's important to say because, you know, not all parts of a country are, are created equal. But if you take away China, one in seven girls will be married by age 18 globally. And we just see it going up and up and up. The, the numbers are really quite astounding. Um, so that's, that's a challenge. The other big number is when you look at violence, and that includes trafficking, one in three girls experience some kind of violence, and most of those girls are 15 and under. So that's huge, and the, the, the sort of scope is trafficking and sexual abuse and sexual harassment, and one of the things that we see in many countries is that girls don't go to school for fear of harassment on the way to school or for fear of harassment once they get to school. And that's such a basic thing. You think a girl ought to be safe in her own community in her own school, and she's not. The program uh, that you're having in Ethiopia seems to be like a success story. Uh, is it possible that some of those uh, programs, some of those ideas can be replicated into other countries, especially like the Congo, where sexual violence still tops everything? Well, we're doing that right now. Now, we're replicating the program in Liberia, in Malawi, and in Guatemala. In Malawi, they decided that they wanted to work on science and math education. So that's a special component of that program. They're also working to pass a law against child marriage. So they want it to be up to age 18. And they're making some headway there. 
In the Congo, we don't have a program there yet, but I can tell you that there's a program called V-Day, which has, has started, um, a woman named Eve Ensler started something called the City of Joy there, which is quite remarkable and really empowering women to avoid violence and to take charge of their lives. And so little bit by little bit, we're seeing these programs spread and we're seeing change. And that was Voice of America's Pauline Dijo talking to Tamara Krenin, Executive Director of Women and Population at the UN Foundation.